don't know if you guys can hear that or not. But I hear wolves. And I heard tracking. They sound close. I'm Tyler Wood Bushcraft. And I'm Justin Van Frary with Waypoint Outdoor Adventure. And I'm Mark from Rolling Olmstead. And this is the seven day extreme winter challenge, Northern Wisconsin. Hey guys, so I got my boots right next to my pan. Egg is harder than the cast iron pan. One more time. How hard is that? <laughs> the egg. The egg is harder than the cast iron pan. Didn't even break the shell. All right. Um, I think what we got to do is uh, roast our eggs for a little bit. Alright you guys, I got my bag, I got my rifle with me, I got my tripod, my main camera, and we're going to go exploring. So, I know I probably look weird because my, I don't, you guys don't see my beard. I have to tuck my beard in because it just keeps freezing over and freezing over and I start picking at that, uh, that ice. <laughs> so, I don't want to keep doing that. So I have my beard tucked in underneath my sweatshirt I definitely think I'm getting sick I can hear my voice my nose has been all stuffy of course you know doing this kind of extreme winter challenge there is going to be stuff like that that happens you just got to keep pushing on moving on and getting through it so I'm going back out to that lake I'm going to try to see if I can't find us a rabbit or some kind of squirrel or something for uh, dinner tonight We've been eating venison and steak, and I wanted, wanted something a little different, so I, uh, I figured this would be the best way to do it. Let me uh, pull you guys over to the side here. 
I'm gonna show you guys the uh, the cedar swamp that we're going through. Most of these trees out here, like I said, are gonna be cedar, white cedar like this. We're gonna have uh, white pine, and we're gonna have birch bark, like white birch bark, and we're gonna harvest some some birch bark today for uh, some tinder because we are getting pretty low on that black and white fire starter uh, cure package that Paul Corona sent us. And uh, what we do have left, we need to save for those emergency situations because I trust black and white fire starters actually with my life. Just for that simple fact that, uh, you know, the first three days were so rough. It hasn't been able to get past zero degrees out, so I, uh, I want to make sure I got something there in case uh, it gets too cold and I need to get a fire going before I get into uh, hypothermia again. So, I don't know why I point the camera down. So here we go, taking you guys along for this venture. Uh, hopefully we can catch something down here and have some nice eating tonight. Like I said, you guys are seeing, I'm standing on about four to five feet of snow. The snow out here is just absolutely ridiculous and it's snowing right now. I don't know how well that's going to pick up on camera, but it is snowing now. And, uh, you know, as you can see some of these holes that we've already walked back and forth, harvesting trees and everything else. Look at that massive hole. That's about two and a half to three feet and that's not even hitting the ground. So I'm trying to avoid stepping in anything like that because I still have not had time to do my snowshoes because walking from camp all the way down here to the forest, it's been absolutely brutal doing stuff in the cold, trying to film to give you guys a perspective on, on what the what it's been like out here. So everything takes like 10 to 15 times longer when you include the the cold tracking through five feet of snow cutting down trees making sure it's on camera uh first three days my main camera i've barely been able to record on because it it's been so cold i take the battery right off the charger at 100 percent put it on my camera i got to turn it on and i got about 10 percent left that's how cold it's been so it's been absolutely brutal out here, but at the same time, it's been absolutely beautiful out here. Call me crazy, I guess, right? All right, so I'm gonna shut this off. It's taking so long to get to this lake. I'm going to, uh, I will uh, see you guys when we get close to that lake.
excuse me, who gave you the right to come on this land? All right, you guys, if we can get 200 likes on this video, I'll show you what's hiding in that den. All right, you guys, we have our fire. It is nice and warm in here. For the first time in a while, I finally feel nice and warm. So um, I took a lot of precautions in doing this. I would not recommend this unless you absolutely are positive you know what you're doing because you don't want to burn down your, I mean, we are like six feet off the ground right now up in the tree. So uh, this is absolutely just totally amazing. I got, I took my emergency bivy up here on top and uh, as you can see that from up there, um, it's it's reflecting the heat right back down on me. It's gonna hit hit my sleeping bags up. It's gonna keep me warm. And uh, this might be the first night where I don't wake up at one, two o'clock in the morning, just shivering, freezing cold, trying to get a fire going, walking around, keeping my blood circulated. This is a, a major accomplishment. This has definitely boosted up my uh, my energy now. I don't even know if I'll be able to sleep knowing that uh, I got a nice nice hot fire going. So, uh, all right, I'll, I'll I'll tell you guys the story you guys have all been waiting for. Let's throw a little bit more wood on the uh, the fire here. All right, you guys, as I promised. At the night of day two, sleeping in my hammock in the shelter that I have now. With no source of heat. No sleeping bag. It was absolutely brutal. I fell asleep for about an hour, hour and a half. Everyone was asleep. I woke up freezing cold. I couldn't feel my feet. I couldn't feel my, my fingers. I was in... Uh, pre-hypothermia um, I was jogging and running up and down up and down trying to get my my uh, I got a fire going first I remember that and, I, and as, as I got the fire going and I want to give a big shout out to black and white fire starters because if I didn't have uh, one of their fire starters with me I you know I could be in the hospital it could be way worse but 
Uh, I got a fire going. Uh, it, it, even with as quick as, I mean, one strike and, you know, one flick of a, a lighter and you have fire. And even though it was so easy to do that, I, I was struggling. My hands were shaking so much I couldn't line the fire starter in my Bic lighter up to uh, get a fire going. It was just absolutely horrible. And uh, once I finally got that managed, uh, as the fire and the kindling and getting the big logs on, I, I would jog back and forth all throughout the night, getting the fire going and stand by the fire. Uh, day one, I slept in Mark's cabin. Uh, I just had a rough start getting my shelter done. But now that my shelter is finally completed and I'm able to sleep in, in it on day four, I am so thankful. I, I did not intend it to uh, take this long on building my shelter, but when you're walking through four feet of snow and hauling up, you know, 30, 40 plus feet high trees to build your shelter and trying to stay warm and eat, it's just there's not enough time in a day to, to do uh, the shelter. There's not enough, you, you can't do this in one day. Um, but after, back to the story, after I, uh, I, I, even with the fire, even keeping my, my body circulated, my, my feet were just hurting. I mean, they were hurting, but I didn't feel it. And, uh, I got in Mark's, uh, little cabin and Justin came in there. Mark came, Mark woke up, Justin came in there and, uh, they, they, they got a fire going inside their cabin to, uh, uh, warm me up and it took I was probably in there for about four to five hours sitting there warming up I actually had my my feet right on Mark's little wood burning stove that he has in his cabin I had my feet directly on it and I couldn't feel it and he's like hey your foot is on there that's gonna hurt and I was like what are you talking about he's and I looked down and yeah my foot's right on the uh the wood burning stove and I didn't feel it so, uh I took my sock off uh, I didn't have bare skin on the, the wood burning stove, just FYI. I had my wool socks on, but I, I took my sock off and I'm looking and I got a goose egg that's all black right around where my ankle, the ankle bone is. Uh, my ankle was really skinny, which was weird. I've never seen that before, but the heel, the, the bottom of my heel was uh, puffy and really, like, really big and puffy. And, uh, this this all happened uh, start of night two uh, into day three. I didn't feel my feet at all. Walking around, building my shelter, I couldn't feel my feet. I wasn't in I wasn't in pain, but I know since I couldn't feel them that it probably wasn't good. Um, it was it was the closest I've ever got to going into full hypothermia. Uh, so I like I said, I owe Mark with Rolling Home said Wild Edibles. And Justin Van Ferrari with Waypoint Outdoor Adventures, a, a huge, uh, I owe them huge. You know, I, I owe my life because, you know, if they didn't uh, get up and check on me and I would have fell asleep, you know, there, there's no telling what could happen. So I, uh, I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart because, uh, you know, I have a wife and I have a daughter to get back to. And uh, that leads me to my second story for the night. You guys are going to get a bonus. Because uh, I forgot to tell story night yesterday. Uh, being out here in this freezing cold. Uh, some of the challenges that you run across. Is obviously if you have a beard. It's all icy. You can see I got ice. Real nasty. Um, that 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 sucks. Uh, ice on the mustache. And you try to pick it off. And it pulls your, your, your uh, mustache beard. That hurts. Um, another thing too. Uh, you know, walking through four or five feet of snow. You, we pack, Mark and, and Justin have snowshoes and they pack it down a little bit. But every once in a while, well, more than once in a while, you'll you'll step in and you'll be up to your waist in snow because they, they their snowfall up here is just absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so, you know, collecting trees and pines and all that stuff, everything that we need to thrive out here is a challenge uh that's that's some of the hard stuff you know only eating once a day compared to at home you guys all know me i'm a snacker i love my snacks you know so uh, 
you know, not having my stacks really, uh, that, that's a bummer. But, uh, last but certainly not least, the hardest thing is, uh, you know, missing your family. Um, my wife, my beautiful daughter, uh, she, uh, she is so smart for her age. Um, she, she, she already knows sign language for the most part, like the real simple common stuff. She knows the sign language for more and, uh, she will, uh, drink her, 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 uh, juice or water and, uh, she'll, she'll do this sign for, for more and she'll say more, more and, uh, you know, uh, there'd be some times I'd be on the couch and I'd just be like, ah, oh, man, I just filled your cup up, you know, um, and, uh, not that it was a bother or anything like that, you know, just, uh, stuff like that, that's what I miss, you know, uh, I miss her little voice where she's, uh, walking around saying more, more, you know, it's, I miss that girl so much, her always saying da 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 da, um, yeah, I, I, I miss them. I miss my wife telling me about her day, asking how mine is. I uh I miss I miss them so much. The only thing I'm looking forward to is uh going home and seeing them because they are my rock, you know. They are absolutely everything to me. And I can't wait I can't wait to see her. I can't wait for my little girl to come, you know, running to the run to the door as soon as I get in and give me a hug because I miss her so much. You know, I feel like she's the, the only thing that I, uh, I, I can be really proud of and that, uh, I did. So, um, that's, that's my story for the night, guys. Uh, it's, it's getting late. Uh, I need to get some more fire going in my little bushcraft fire pit and, uh, get some sleep because day five tomorrow it's going to be a heat wave it's going to be like 20 degrees tomorrow and that's fahrenheit that's not celsius so uh it's going to be a heat wave for us because we've been so down the the zero and below zero digits that it's been absolutely crazy so uh we're gonna go air rifle hunting tomorrow thanks to a good buddy uh troy hammer with um Annihilator air guns check his channel out. I will definitely drop us uh, A link to his channel below too. We're gonna go out and go have an adventure tomorrow This is something that Justin with waypoint outdoor adventures. who's out here with us uh, He's all about adventure and you can just tell it just by uh, I, I've done more watching him and and rolling home said wild edibles mark than I have actually been recording I just been really watching and observing and, and I've learned so much in the last four days with these two guys out here and that's to me this is what it was about it wasn't about out here trying to do a survival challenge or you know thriving out here it was more of you know I, I'm, I'm new to this to all this you know I I uh I'm, I'm learning so much and I'm so thankful for them so uh when you guys see me it'll be morning and uh, hopefully I won't be freezing in the middle of the night so I'm going to hunker down, call it a night, so we'll see you guys.